in a very small radius specifically. Like, anyway, um, <laughs> adult ADHD. I had to, I had to grab the the, the, the fidget, fidget. The fidget <laughs> to get me back on track. Okay, get, get him back. You know, Fast forward, we end up shooting the video. The video was fantastic. We edited it in about a week. Um, and then Mike was like, yo, we're, we're about to upload this on YouTube. And I was like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. He uploads it. And I remember where I was. I was in the Bronx. I was at a bar. Yeah. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. And he texted me. He's like, yo, it's just been uploaded. And I was like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> we got a whole video on this on YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. So cool. Yes, like that simple as that now. Back then, it was right. like, ah. Yo, <laughs> so great. So great. And there was zero expectations. Like, we mm. didn't we never, we never, didn't go into this. And not one point did we talk about, yo, we got to do this. So this is the expectation. Or this is what we got to push it. We got to push yeah. it. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Bro, 11 o'clock, that video gets uploaded to YouTube. Get home, probably like 2 o'clock in the morning. Wake up. I look at my phone. Yo, 20,000. And I'm talking about like, I'm, I woke up at like 9 o'clock, 20,000 views. In less than, you're talking about in a span of 10 hours. That's crazy. That's for, crazy. On YouTube. And I'm like, I know you was hype. <laughs> what? I know I you was, was hype. I was hype, but I was like, nah, something's wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> something's wrong. And I kept, I kept closing it out. And then They're I would back. open it up. And then it would <laughs> be another 5,000. Oh, shit. And then, wow. it, yo, it just kept That's going. Wild. And then after that, I was like, oh, I call Mike in the morning. I'm like, yo, bro, have you, are you seeing this? And he's like, dude, this shit is going crazy. Like, he was bugging out. He's like, yo, bro. Like, it was a legit viral, viral fucking yeah. moment. Yeah. And and so at that point, like, I was like, all right, I'm just going to start texting this to everybody. <laughs> so to Might as well push yeah, that yeah, shit. Push it, push it, push it. I got, I got a 3,000-member group. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. and um, by the end of the following week, we were at a couple hundred thousand. And wow. that was, you talking about a couple hundred thousand in 2010, is it's viral, it's viral. Huge. for, for, you, for yeah. two dudes yeah. out, of, you, you, out of a neighborhood in, in a week in, you, in you hit York. a level already like, right that there. was insane yeah, yeah that was insane and so <laughs> like I, and we say this all the time we're like damn man i wish i knew now what i i wish i knew then what i know now and what how i would have taken advantage mm. of that situation hell yeah but like you know you There's everything no happens way. for yeah. a reason yeah, of course you know? of course and so for us it was like all right so what are we going to do next mm. And then that led us to becoming this group of Bago and O. And then it was because our we didn't have a manager, but like our producer Frank was like, "What are you gonna call yourselves?" Like, mm. and and we we're just we we're so creative. We were like, "How about it's just Juan Bago and O?" <laughs> His name and then the first letter of mine because it's like whatever. Oh, and shit. and it just yo it went it went and then um it was funny because then it got picked up by Univision. It got picked up by Telemundo. I remember seeing um, that on MTV Tres. MTV yeah, Tres. Like, mm. And so. <laughs> That was the wildest thing too. Is that this music video that came from an idea that I had in my in a chat room that we shot with one <laughs> yeah, that's camera, crazy. That's with, crazy. Like, with a laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Bad. yo, like to it, make it to all those places. To like, make fuck. it to all of those platforms. Wow. But the wildest thing was was the interpretation. So all of these platforms that were watching these videos, they were like starting to interpret it. And that's the beautiful thing about art. And that's the beautiful thing about creativity is that just create to create. Don't, don't, like, you can have your mind focused on what it is and why and what's inspiring mm -hmm. you, and that's fine, but create, right? Because at the end of the day, the biggest, the biggest, like, rewarding thing in this world, the most rewarding thing in this world, is to have other people react to what you put out into the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a negative reaction, a positive reaction, a lukewarm reaction. It's a reaction. It's a reaction. It's being seen. And yeah. that, to me, is the essence of creativity, mm. is that you're creating so that, you're making people feel like don't just don't just I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I just feel like it's so important to, like, keep that in the back of your head is like, how is somebody going to feel about this? You know, like, but don't let it get too because wrapped up, wrapped yeah, up yeah. in it. Right. Because mm -hmm. you can become your worst enemy. That's true. It's true. And that does happen. You stop yeah. your creativity because exactly. you get stuck. And you I think your stuck. point of view uh, it takes a back seat exactly, yeah. if, if you start thinking about what other people are going to think about yeah, exactly. it. You just got to make from where you are in this moment in time that you find yourself mm -hmm. in. And, and so. We Everybody's took that. But this, this is all facts. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all facts. facts. <laughs> but it, 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 it led us to to start to start shooting other stuff, and we were like, "Yo, I think we have a lane here of 
being the new age Milli Vanillis yeah. and but doing it in a comedic way like we we not gonna <laughs> take really, really. we not we not taking ourselves yo serious, but hold up you know? I heard was for Khalifa text about it or some so, shit like so, that so really? he, he yeah. referenced and that was a that was a dope dope moment was like there was a there was an interview that they were doing with Wiz at the time I forgot what what channel it was whether it was MTV Fuse or, or whatever but they had mentioned to Wiz like hey like how do you feel about all these remixes that are coming out and he mentioned he's like yeah there's a Spanish one that's out there it's pretty dope and I was like didn't mention us at all it could have it been a remix from like <laughs> Colombia and like that's hilarious but, but like we were like nah yo you're talking about us but um, back to what I was saying it's like yo the interpretation the that people were, were were going with it. They were like, so Univision when they did the 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 <laughs> did the interview, like the whole setup to it was these two Dominicans from the neighborhood talking about you know bread and cheese because times are poverty, hard. Poverty, poverty. Because, because times are hard. Yeah, I knew they were gonna go that route. Yeah. I knew they were gonna go that route. Yeah. Yeah. Go that route. Yeah. In this That's neighborhood hilarious. where there's where there's poverty, there yeah. is a light yeah. Yeah. at the end of the tunnel, and something as simple as bread and cheese and a coffee can change your entire day. I, I, I had a feeling that I never saw that. One, but I had a feeling that that's yeah. the route that they were going with. And, and and then the wild thing was that like it that wasn't just it wasn't just them because oh, you started seeing man. some of the comments and it was it started getting like real socio political and it was like yeah. wow nigga we was just out here running and, like we was just running around I, like, I just like Paco no, Queso, bro. Yeah. That's why yeah. we was just talking about this quick little breakfast that you get up exactly, at all that exactly, you know like that, bro. But wow. it, it it just goes to show like. Like, yo, <laughs> so many things can resonate with people in so many different ways. Because that bread and cheese and that cafecito, that triggers a lot of people to remember those times that when they were with their mom or their dad walking to school and before school, they went to the bodega mm -hmm. or they went to the bakery and their dad got a coffee and they got a bread and cheese and they split it as they walked to school. Yeah. Like, something as visual as that, it, like, it, it takes you back. Like, oh my God. You know, like I, this, this so simple. It's so so simple. Anyway, so that led us to to start making a bunch of other videos. We ended up shooting and recording about thirteen videos. Of those thirteen videos, seven of them got picked up and were syndicated on uh, Music Choice, on MTV Tres, on Mundos, oh wow, on MTV. Awesome. Um, Damn! So that was that was dope. That's a yeah. good record. Yeah. No, my man. That was seven out of out of twelve. Uh, do you have like a little plaque that? Yeah, shit. right. Nah, 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 nah. We just we have we like on YouTube. If you look it up, you can see the watermark from a lot of the <laughs> yeah, because people were burning the. So so this They're is what burning. ends up happening, and you kind of mentioned it before. So we doing this shit out of fuck it, right? Yeah. Like we kind of just doing this shit. We not we not taking into account licensing. We not taking oh, into account fuck. none yeah. of this shit. We really just taking regular songs, regular and beats, and just beat. throwing it out there. Yeah. Oh, oh wow! So then the second one that we did, the second video was the Minis in the Heights. My favorite song, favorite video ever. It was amazing. We had Lin Manuel in it. We had it was and that was the thing like Mike had so many connections that it was very easy to get, you know, people to come and make a cameo or yeah. like get a random ambulance truck to be yeah. in this video even though that's completely <laughs> against the law. Like it, it he was able to make those things happen. But that video which was Dominis in the Heights was um that was Jay Z and Kanye's "Niggas in Paris." Mm. So we did that. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that track. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now we had a lot of fun with that. We had so much fun with that video and so much fun because we were like, "All right, if we could do this, let let's really get in the lab now and start really plotting this shit out shit. Yeah, and talk yeah. about how we gonna make this video." Mm -hmm. And so, Ja, because I had already dressed us for um, the pan con queso. I then became the the person that like wardrobe wardrobe. Yeah. I'm doing wardrobe for everybody. For, now you wardrobe. I'm doing costume. I'm doing all yeah, that shit. Funny. And so we did it. It was super fun. It was great. We upload the video, and then it hits twenty thousand within I think the first like week or two weeks or some shit like that. And then it stopped. Mm. Oh, you're like fuck. They clipped them. Mm. They clipped you yeah. And then I'm like, yo, I'm panicking. I'm like, yo, Mike, what's going on? Like, it's been a few uh, days, and it's are just we been not hot in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> are we cooling down? I'm like, are we cooling what's down? going on? What's happening? <laughs> and then, and then we both got um, those like 
on on the YouTube account, like, hey, this is being taken down because of oh, inf- shit. copyright infringement. And we're like, what the fuck? But it's a parody, no? It, yeah, yeah, but, but we, the, you, the you don't change oh, the so actual oh, I see. So then, okay. after that second video is when we realized, and talking about still 2010, excuse me, still 2010, I was like, yo, we gotta we gotta do something to the music. We either gotta slow down the pitch or, or, mm-hmm. or, or speed it up yeah. so that it doesn't catch. Because then I started watching videos about licensing on YouTube. <clears throat> And I was like, all right, if we don't want this system, YouTube system, to catch the beat because that's what oh, they're tracking, gotta, oh, gotcha. then you got to like either do something to, 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 to manipulate the track a little bit, right? So we started slowing down the tracks. It's th- Yo, but like slow it down by like a little bit. Not even mm-hmm. so much. That it, it still sounds the same, yeah, yeah. you know? But to the computer, it will throw them off. Anyway, we started doing that with all the other ones. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, we did it for, for a few years. I want to say it was like so that, three so years. So that was the workaround for you guys. That was the workaround. To, to get by and, and, the copyright and, infringement. And yeah. that could make it... that <laughs> makes the machines. It, ingenuity to yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, you just yeah. tweaking something on the beat, just slightly lowering it down, is it that nobody could come after you after like that? Like you didn't get any letters from lawyers? It, so, so Unless again, he's making money off of it. Oh, yeah, yeah and we weren't, we weren't, we weren't monetized. Like, yes, 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 but yes. if you're making money off of it, then they, yeah, they'll come yeah, after you. They'll come yeah. after you. But yeah. we weren't, tweak it a little bit, yeah, yeah okay. No, we no, weren't yeah, monetizing yeah, anything. It was just, that's the thing, like they can just stop. Stop it, yeah, yeah. Stop it from How many views it capped on on Pango Queso? So Pan Con Queso, after after a year, we ended up hitting a million. We ended wow. up hitting a million within the Fuck. first year. That's huge. Yeah. Hell so, yeah. So that was that was a major that was Hell a major yeah. accolade. Yeah, like, pop open the Prosecco. I, I, I popped open a bottle because I had two hundred views. <laughs> That's, Ooh, crazy. That's, a win. That's a win. That's a win. That's a win. Like, oh shit! Yeah. Season two, two hundred views. <laughs> I was there. I was at work. I was at work at my office, and I looked at it. I was at work at my office. I looked at it. All I did was, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. Just said two o five. I'm about to text my supervisor right now. I'm not coming in. I'm done. I'm not coming in. Take this as my final notice. This thing settled a million. It worked out. Fucking million. Yeah, man. Yeah. Damn, you gotta what? celebrate the wins. Oh man, you gotta, you gotta celebrate yeah. all wins. All so wins. yes, two hundred no. and um, one million. And congratulations, <laughs> congratulations Thank on you that. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you. Mad yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but you don't get a plaque when you hit a million, or you gotta subscribe. No, a no, no. Are you gonna no, make no. a plaque for the two hundred? I, I don't remember. I, I don't. Th- oh no, so I do remember. <laughs> Because we once we hit that million, I was like, all right, when is the money coming? <laughs> right. Right. That's what I would have right. thought. So like now yeah, this is yeah. where the money Something, comes yeah. in. And then we started doing more research and it was like, nah, 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 nah. Subscribers. No, the, 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 no because again, this is 2010. This is before uh, a lot of those yeah, rules yeah, didn't exist. Uh, monetization. They, they didn't get yeah, monetization. They wasn't wasn't money. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. So, so what <laughs> it was. like, yo, was, my deal. Like, yeah. <laughs> So in order to make money at that time on YouTube, you needed to have more multiple videos that had hit over a million. Oh my god! Uh, so it has to be a consistent, not just one. one got you know, you, got now today, if you do that, which is wild to me, because like, yo, you got a rapper from from Bumblefuck Staten Island <laughs> drop one fucking track that is wild. It blows. That's it. Like it's off he's of on. one track, yeah, yeah. he's on. You know, he bought his first house. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah exactly. That's no, that shit, yeah. So so it, again, it was it was a uh, it was very much the wild west. Um, I, and and I say I say it very confidently, like yo, Mike and I were were viral fucking like local influencer celebrities <laughs> before that was right. a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And it, was, right it, it was so dope because you know at the time I'm I'm like 20, 25, 26 years old, and like. I'm in this neighborhood where I was born and I went to school and you know, like I had moved away, but I still, my, my grandmother, my aunt still live here. So I, I have that connection. I'm still here all the time. And to walk around this neighborhood after I had already moved back to the Heights at that point to walk around my, my neighborhood and like, yo, everybody like, no, they know you, yeah. bro. It's, it, it's weird. Yeah. Like, like it, it's like, you really be walking down the block and somebody's like, yo, Paco Queso, <laughs> bro. I was in city Island, bro. In Damn. city Island yeah. at seafood city. The oh, ghetto wow. is place ghetto, of yeah, the yeah, world, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. The one all the way in the back, right? Bro, all the way, in, yo, I'm there and I'm getting, I'm getting my little uh, Henny Culotta <laughs> at, at, at this little <laughs> tiki bar right now, in the back. And then oh, these shit. three dudes, they're like, yo, yo. And I'm like, oh shit, yeah, man. What shit about to pop off. Cause it's 
Gangnam City, yeah, yeah, nigga. Yeah. I was expecting a traitor, like, come my way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit. shit fuck. He was like, yo, bro, you from Paco Queso. I want to buy you a drink. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll right. take that. But then the, the, the wild shit, and, and it's funny because you asked me when I was talking about the Univision thing, you were like, yo, was it, in, was it an English or a Spanish interview? I was talking about it in English. Now, this is the thing. If you follow Bago and No, and you follow all of those all those music videos, and it's all in Spanish. It's all mm -hmm. in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm 100 percent Dominican. <laughs> I speak Spanish. I can yo me yo me defiendo, right? Like I, I can have a conversation with you. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime when you get you with me, you know, because you know, like, <laughs> pero, <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> now when you got when you got a lot of like Dominican, okay. because remember, Banco Queso <laughs> came out when What I Got to Beat Berry came oh, out, man. when Plátano yeah. con Salami, yeah, 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 like yeah. all of those, all of these joints were coming out at the same exact time. Oh, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. About so, that. so, and and you guys know Mike. Mike is also one hundred percent Dominican. Yeah. Listen, man. Ni una palabra. Ni una palabra. No, you won't. You won't. You won't. Right? But he. It, it's so interesting because he he still connects to that audience very yeah. very well. Mm -hmm. So I started getting yo my nigga, oh my god, like I would have people from DR or even family like they would start talking to me like yo oh perform this perform this and I'm uh, like ah that came out fuck yo no hago eso yo no hago eso family <laughs> parties perform agent. this perform nah, this no, no, no puedo así así no es que funciona no, así no, no, tú sabes que te ah pero tú eres Hollywood tú eres Hollywood es que me duele la garganta mucho hoy y estoy tomando té para que se me alivie yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. every family party oh, si every family party tú, tú le bailas de una vez yeah, yeah. Pero enseña, ¿no? Me encanta. A la cosa. Yeah, man. So, and then it's it's hard to like, and it wasn't that we never kept it a secret that we were like that we would just nigga, you hit a million views. It wasn't a secret. It wasn't a secret. Even even in the information or whatever, we put everything like who was who, who was doing what. We always wanted to make sure that that was very clear from the get, because the fact of the matter is, when you see a video and you see two dudes, you think only about those two dudes right, that's what but she there said. is a whole team, yeah. team behind, oh, 100%. behind it yeah. yeah and we were mike and i were so big and still to this day is is about giving people their credit and giving people yeah, their props absolutely and and also just supporting our friends you know what i'm saying like yeah. it, it's it's always been about that so it it gets it gets a little weird though at a certain point <laughs> because when brands start calling you and they just want you to oh, yeah. mm. and they don't want everybody you got a whole squad and right, then it becomes right, right, right. it becomes and I, I don't know if Mike ever went that deep with you guys on like the downfall of Bago and Do after mm. after all the but it, it wasn't because me and him had a falling out or anything like that it was because we started to try to get very professional with what we were doing. Mm. We ah, got people yeah. to manage us. Yeah, and we yeah. Oh, how was that a, experience? Because you're not you great. Like okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm always and shit, curious right? about that. We had we we performed twice. <laughs> so what the fuck does manager do? No, well, oh. it was it was it was to find those find those opportunities for us, and but did also they? to find brand opportunities for us. Oh, Where okay. you performed at? At uh, Museo de Barrio, we performed. Oh, oh sweet! Okay. Yeah, so yeah. we opened up. We opened up for Nina Sky. Oh, at, at Museo de Barrio. Nina Sky. Yeah, and that That's was a big cool. deal, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. fangirling. Nina yeah. Sky at the time was yeah. big yeah. though. Yeah. And like, that's that's oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. And it's so funny. From Mike and I were like, <laughs> yo, we no, I don't think that's dumb. No, nah, huh? no, nah, you think of a Lumidi. That's oh, Lumidi. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lumidi. No, I mean, they were like, you know, but that's the same that's around the same time. Yeah, around the same, same time. Same, same song. Give me Nina Sky. Because they ended up being DJs, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Are they DJs now? They're yeah. DJs now. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to fuck with me. I don't uh, remember I'll this song. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. So, Damn, um, yeah, it got me. So, yeah, so we knew that that performance was coming and we were like, Shit, we, we really got to perform on stage. Right. We got to really lip, lip, lip sing that whole shit. Yeah, Wait, so. Oye mi canto. Oye mi canto. Body. Yeah. With Diego Calderon. Yeah. 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 Um, so then Mike and I were like, all right, well, we're we going to have to rehearse. And we started rehearsing. Like, we would we started performing. We yeah. would act, like, when we did that whole thing, that was us actually, like, performing it. And the wildest thing is that we don't sound like we don't sound like <laughs> Anthony. We don't sound like Jeff. We sound completely different. Um, so we were like, "Yo, 
let's not focus on the song, on the words. <laughs> just focus just focus on, on the movement. On the movement. On the yeah, movement yeah, yeah, exactly. And looking good and and acting it out, you know. And so that we we really kind of focused on that. And so then there was another performance that happened, and I, I actually couldn't be there um, at. Um, so spot he, downtown. He subbed you in. <laughs> he had to, yeah, no, no, no. They, they had to sub me in. Um, unfortunately, it was it was um, my grandmother had passed away, so I was mm-hmm. like, "Damn, this is this is great," but I, I can't I can't mm-hmm. be there, you know. Yeah. Um, so Jerry, ah, oh, oh. he subbed you in with another Jerry, brown dude. Yeah, he <laughs> subbed me in for the other brown dude, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. which happened to be his cousin Jerry. Oh, wow. motherfucker! Shout, shout out to Jerry, man. <laughs> um, and and that was a, a cool performance, and it was downtown. Where does Hot ninety seven? They they usually have, um, they do all their like first come like uh open mic joints downtown by their offices oh, what's fuck the name I, I remember but I, I know what you're talking about i don't recall from anyway it's a really it's a really popular like it's a well-known spot sobs here. sobs there you go. sobs like, <laughs> and the neurons had to come it was SOBs. Like neurons, <laughs> neurons. so so they had it was a performance at sobs it's like and on, so i forgot what street but yeah, yeah so Warren or some shit. he mm-hmm. ended up having these two girls dress up like cafecitos like cups like literally costumes, like and, like a mascot costume. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. then as him and Jerry perform, <laughs> like, like a Greca. Like, no, 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 like cup, a cup. cup. Like oh, a cup. Oh no way! Oh, like with, the the handle, with the handle, with the handle, with all that. Yeah, they were dressed. The these two girls were dressed in these like coffee cup. Oh my god! Oh, so he, he but like the, you know, but like the blue cup. Yeah, 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 yeah the blue cup. The fuck oh, cup. Oh, cup. Like a, oh, oh, that cup. Like, like, oh, got him up. Someone's job from the world's best coffee shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's with someone's job to go find those costumes. Yes, for them. That's so he brought production in there. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so those were the two times <laughs> oh, that, that that we ended up kind of performing or whatever. But after but you didn't that, perform on that one. I, that one I didn't perform. Um, but then after that, about a year after we had dropped Pan Con Queso and we were still making videos or whatever, we ended up getting a a, a deal with Pepsi. No and way. So, yeah, wow. so, we we no, got but this a, manager did his thing then. No, yeah. no, no, no. That wasn't no, the no, manager. That was, no, agent. That, no, no. that was through personal connections. Oh, oh shit! shit. I know, but not even yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, then that there goes there lies the problem. The the problem was that between Mike and myself, we actually had a lot of connections mm-hmm. in the industry, and so as we were putting these videos out, and a lot of the folks that I was texting were people who were already in the industry mm-hmm. working at larger brands just because like I happen to know them. Mike has built relationships over X amount of years. So they've been seeing this stuff and they're mm-hmm. they're keeping track with it. We get reached out to by Pepsi. We end up doing a deal with them for about a year and we signed with them to basically travel the country for brisk iced tea. What? So there was mm. a campaign that they were doing called Brisk Bodega. And so it was all about <laughs> like bringing back, like popularizing brisk again, yeah, iced yeah. tea and all that shit, but under this guise of a bodega, right? The thing is that bodegas are, are synonymous to New York. There's mm-hmm. right. you go anywhere else. There's no you concept say, of bodega. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a corner yeah. store. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like, got gas stations. Exactly. Out right. Other exactly. Convenience stores. Convenience, convenience stores. stores. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so it was interesting. You taking this dynamic, this very New York thing, right. and then trying to replicate it in, in different markets across the country. So we we ended up signing with them. We traveled all around the country for about a year. And um, we went to Chicago, we went to um, Texas, to, to Houston, Texas, Miami, to L.A., um, here in New York. And, and, and we basically would go, do these, like, deep dive videos on the cities for a whole day. And we would stop at, like, different, like, creative small businesses, mm-hmm. talk mm-hmm. to them. Tell, tell, they would tell us about, like, their pride, about, you know, whatever, where they're from. <laughs> um, and then at night, there was a, a big show and a big concert a big Uh event that would happen that pepsi and i mean brisk was hosting and it was a lot of up-and-coming folks from those areas Mm. so you know like i I got to meet when we were in la i got to meet casey veggies who back in the day like he was one of those up-and-coming rappers you know like he was whatever um you don't hear a lot about him now but like (laughs) he was an up-and-coming rapper you know like and so like we were on stage introducing all of these acts mm. okay. and there were like three four five hundred people that were there and these were indoor venues outdoor venues and so mike and i and mike has never done this before but i i i had yeah. been doing it right. you know yeah, that's how you gotta i've been it. on the cover of cs catalog you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> talking about let me show you a thing or two get on my level <laughs> baby <laughs> and so it was it was oh, interesting shit. because it was um for those who knew mike at that point and I, i'm sure he'll say it too like 
M- Mike was a little, he was shy, like, to be in front of that many people and, like, have to, like, act out. Like, it's intimidating. It, 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 it can be. And so this is what I was saying. It's it goes back. Like, it wasn't until a couple of years later that I was, like, because even when I was on stage with Mike and I'd be like, yo, it's easy, bro. Come yeah. on. Like, just, <laughs> just be yourself, just be bro. Yourself, yeah. you know? like, it's own, easy to say. Own though. that. Yeah. Go on that <laughs> stage and nobody's fucking with you and, like, just go. And, um... I realized real quickly that like it wasn't just go, you know what I'm saying? So like, like, and he started taking a lot, referencing a lot of the stuff that I would do on stage. He this started was, getting this comfortable. This was after performing the song, though, right? This is, he just took it. He just took it. During the same time. Yeah, during the like, same time. Like, like, like I, um, when I performed for Nina Sky, he mm-hmm. was he was I, nervous. I think we was, we was easier both, though. Nah, we was both nervous because we were like, damn, I'm getting winded after every <laughs> verse here. Like, I don't know how they do this. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like. It was tough, but um, yeah, he started getting real comfortable with it. I, I was super comfortable with it. We just got exposed to some amazing opportunities, and we just did a lot of really dope, dope shit. You know, um, not a lot of people could say, "Yo, at 27, I was traveling." That was that. That's, 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 that's fire. fire. Yeah. Like every, that's and fire. again, it's like everything's yeah. paid for. You can yeah, 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 now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You on tour, baby? You're doing all that yeah, shit. And you're on tour. Paid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the 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 eclipse of it all. Um, it's happened like, it's like they jacking my swag There's a fucking agent That's collecting 10% That nigga Has not no, put one and one together God, uh, yeah. like, I mean, Your manager Or agent Whatever yeah. What race were they? They were Spanish Everybody was Spanish Oh yeah? yeah. Oh, okay But hmm. things just got a little yeah. Things got a little, little, little Yeah little There are only I white guess. agents In my field <laughs> <laughs> That's why but I'm surprised the, There were Spanish agents But see this is the well, thing the, the thing is that He's an urban yes. Pop coach I'm like, a like, Fitra <laughs> So a bunch yeah. of Jewish agents <laughs> <laughs> I mean I would trust a Jewish agent Before I would trust A Dominican Come agent on. <laughs> No shade on, my, on okay. the Dominicans Out there but I don't know. Yeah. I want to. I want to see the money. <laughs> oh. so, so, so that's that's the thing, man. Like, we, okay. at least I see some of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, we shit. we did. We were doing all this stuff. We ended up hosting for for Pepsi the um, Latin billboards. So they flew oh, us shit. out to Miami, and we were that's crazy. the official host for wow. the Latin billboards Damn. out there. And that was a wild experience too, because we got there. Like and they had cameras on us literally from the moment that we got out of the cab from the airport. So oh, shit. they were wow. recording us the entire. It was like a day in the life, you know, like following us <laughs> to our rooms. Yeah, we yeah. change, then we go to this like little like lobby area where it was nothing but just famous fucking Latinos. Like that's wild. Don't no Omar, Prince Royce, um, uh, Johnny Marines, who you know, managed, from had to be there, right? Well, yeah. he wasn't there, but um, <laughs> some of the other guys was. were. Was Jayla there? No, 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 Don't <laughs> kind of, 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 of talent don't that's mingle level, like that. That's, yeah. that's a different. Well, you're talking about like the B, the B list yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. the Latino <laughs> artists, the, the like ones that, that don't yes, get yes, invited yes. to the academy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, the ones, yes, yes, the yes, ones yes. that you'd be like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, you so old here. I've seen that guy before. I see that guy. But but yeah, so we're 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 in this kind of like lounge area in this hotel and like. We're like, yo, we gotta just randomly go interview people, yo, know? and like, so we oh, were just shit. interviewing, interviewing Johnny Marines. We were interviewing the head of um, uh, Universal Music, uh, this guy named Gustavo, who runs all the Latino stuff yeah. for for all of Universal Music. And I was like, yo, how could we get a deal? And he was like, you gotta jump in this pool right now. It was a rooftop pool, and I was like, all right, fuck it. And I jumped into this rooftop pool. Nobody was in the pool. Nobody was in the pool. Everybody was just casually chilling around yeah, the yeah, pool, yeah, hanging yeah. out normal. And this one brown nigga just from the Heights, <laughs> one Dominican, <laughs> fucking ruins Dominican. everything, <laughs> jumps in the pool. And I'm like, are we signed yet? <laughs> hey, know, whatever God. it takes, bro. Yo, whatever it takes. The, the, the wildest part about that situation right then and there was right before that happened, I'm on this rooftop at this hotel. And I get a phone call, and it was my boss. Because at the time, I'm doing all of this stuff, and I'm still working a corporate job. Oh, like, shit. I'm, I'm oh, you're working? Yeah, oh, I'm working a corporate what did, job. What's I, your, what, what, so what was the corporate job at the time? I was a sales assistant in ad sales oh. for Telemundo. Okay. So I worked at NBC Universal, Shirt and Tie, all this shit. None of those people knew... Or they just were like, oh, that's cute. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't really, they didn't really care. Oh, and shit. so the opportunity to do the Latin billboards literally came up, like, I want to say a week before the Latin billboards. And that's how these things happen. Right, it's like right. these, they're very like, last minute, like, mm-hmm. yo, we got this idea. We want you out there. Or, all right, cool. 
told my boss, I was like, hey, I got I got to call out. I got a gig. I got to call out for a few days. And and they and and my boss, my direct manager at the time, said, "Well, you won't have to talk to the VP because I'm not going to approve you doing this." My, at that time, I also hated hater. that job. I hated Fucking that job. Hater. Jesus yeah. Christ! That was like, nigga, I'm going to the Latin yeah. Billboard. Yeah. 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 Like, God like, damn! Show some love. That was uh, and that was an interesting time too because it was you know a lot of us have had jobs where you're like, damn, I hate this job. This <laughs> job sucks, yo. That job sucked. Like I hated that job. Like. <laughs> and, and and no shade to, to anybody I worked with or anything like that. It was just like, I realized then and there that like being in a very stuffy corporate environment was not where I was supposed to be. And and just the, the micromanaging and all that other shit, it wasn't, I didn't fit in. Like, I, like, yo, it was so wild to me that I'm like, I'm working at Telemundo and I don't fit in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jesus. And again, it, like what, what I was saying before, like mm -hmm. being Dominican and like 100% Dominican and like I can't I don't feel comfortable having a whole conversation with you in Spanish because like whatever it is what it is so I'm already I've already felt that in the back of my like I'm not Dominican enough to be in this Dominican club, you know what I'm saying like so I'm always it's it's it, those were those were the tricklings of what what we call imposter syndrome kind of starting to like rear its head early on right and so I, I was like all right man fuck it, man. I went to the VP. I told him, I was like, listen, I got this opportunity and it's only two days, you know? And he was like, no. Oh, oh wow. Oh, shit. He was like, You're, you you can't, you can't do that. They need to sell as that bed. And Damn. Then I, and then I was like, all right. And then I called out sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I called out sick and I went to Miami. It does be the worst. Well, at least they make us know, man. If you have, but if you have the dates, it's valid. Yeah, but those fucking haters. Yeah. yeah. But, the, yeah. the powers that be. Yeah, they, they, they'll try to shit on you. Here's the thing. Again, I, work, I was working at Telemundo and I was at the Latin billboards. Oh shit, so they're gonna <laughs> be there. So, so the reporter was like, <laughs> they're gonna hey, be there. Oscar. <laughs> so, I heard you're not feeling well. So I, I walk out onto this rooftop. Oh hell no. I'm there for like maybe 10 minutes and my phone starts ringing. Yo, don't tell me that when you jumped in the, the pool. pool. The, the, nah. Somebody filmed nah. you and sent it to the VP. It, it, was, it was after the phone call was when I said, fuck it, I'm jumping in the oh, pool. Oh, I bet, 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 bet. It was, it was the SVP, the big boss. He's like, Oscar, Am I looking at you right now on this rooftop here in Miami? Oh, hell no. Oh, my and God. He was in a hotel across the street. He wasn't invited. On the rooftop. <laughs> fucking <here. laughs> at another party. And he was in another party. And he calls me. He's like, I'm looking at you right now. And he's like, is that you? And I was like, why? Why are you wet? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I just came out the pool. And, and, and right then and there, he's like, listen, when we get back, we're going to have to have a serious Ooh. conversation. Oh, my God. And I was like, yeah, we are. <laughs> and then the call right there. And I was like, like at that point, <laughs> at that point, I was like, yo, fuck it. I'm, I'm already fucked. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, just yeah, fucking yeah. enjoy this shit now. Yeah. So you're um, like, yo, my man, I need this deal. Yeah. Now, now, now. I'm going to jump in this pool. Right? What else you need me to do? Because I'll do it. <laughs> Say it. Um, oh, yeah, man. Shit. So anyway, the point is, yo, we, we got some, we got to do some amazing, amazing things. A lot of awesome, awesome experiences. Um, so and wait, they, why why didn't he give you the deal though? Ah man, come on. He was, he was just pulling your leg. Yeah, he, 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 he was bullshit. He gave me his yeah. number. He gave me his number. He never picked up. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what what was, what's his name? Know. What's his name? Nah, nah, we're not gonna. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Universal in charge of yeah. Latino music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm about to go on LinkedIn and check this out. Damn, you remembered all the laws. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to play it all now, like I didn't say the name. Damn you, Gustavo. She picked up that quick. It's a Gustavo. Um, yeah, man. Sounds like a Gustavo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I've definitely gone off on a wild tangent and uh, talked about this story way longer than it needed to. No, no, no. You know what it is? I'm looking at the time and I'm like, yo, we're at an hour for oh, over an hour forty seven. Wait, hour forty seven? Damn. And, and my oh, man nice. over here walked in saying, "Yo, I got nothing to talk about." <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all the guests before. You know, I don't gotta you you know this, this is the longest we've been. This is yeah. literally my problem on my podcast is that we end up recording for like two or three hours. Oh, wow. Because I, I don't know edit. how to shut up. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, the adult 88 is because I didn't have a fidget. If I had a fidget, <laughs> maybe I could have controlled myself a little bit more. Uh, all right. So, with that said, we'll transition into our last segment, which is called Last Call for Words. 
Last call for words. My brother, Dre Drizzo. Uh, we've been here rocking, laughing. Woo. <laughs> it's been a very interesting conversation. I got a lot, a lot of laugh, a lot of insight. It was good. It was good. Yo, now, uh, I don't want you to think that, you know, if we don't hit these million views. <laughs> You already, already, you at, two, already at 200. I was already saying in my office, I made it. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Keep, keep your comments to yourself. Yeah. I made it. About I'm expectations. Good. Just, just, just making sure we're still on that level. Yeah, nah, 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 205. I, I'm on my way, man. It could be, it could be 210 right now. That, that right, man. Yeah. I check it every morning. <laughs> I wanted to make sure we were centered. We good, we good, we good. Trust me, we good. We good. We good. Uh, what would be your last call for words? Well, for my brother, oh, man. Man, he inspired me, bro. Cause from coming from one idea, Panko Queso, text one other man, and that shit to blow up to a million views and touring with Pepsi and all that, bro. I say when you get an idea and you feel that shit in your gut, hit hit the people that you think that can make it happen with you and just run with it, man. And make shit happen. Like yeah. That was great. Yeah. yeah. My you, 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 didn't, you didn't even have to prepare for that. Like, that really <laughs> I know. Oh, that was like, no, I've been preparing for the last half an hour. <laughs> now, this man. <laughs> Ever since I heard your story, I'm like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> got my takeaway. Done. <laughs> this man right here, when he came onto the podcast, he was like, I don't know how to speak in front of people. Like, I, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, I he's over lie. here speaking as if he's like been on radio for the, the last two decades. Came. They it's both like changed, yo. Lady H and Roddy, they both changed my life. I'm like telling you, I'm telling you. Galore, like, I know, what the fuck? right? <laughs> so eloquent. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you, lady. I appreciate you. <laughs> yo, my brother, oh, man. Yeah, man. yeah it's, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor having you on deck. Hell Thank yeah. You. Um, Hell yeah. Yo, the accolades that you just dropped on us. Uh, not only solidify that you are phenomenal, as I always have thought and known you, you to be, but... Yo, my man, nigga, you are the truth, bro. For real, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, bro. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna try to be like, nah, nah, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, no. not because I, I believe it. It's just because, yo, when somebody gives you your flowers, you should just take them. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You Absolutely. Should just Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I think what what I wanna say is two two things. Two things. One is um speak thing, speak things into existence. Mm. Um, if you if you really believe in something, or if there's something that, like Dre was saying, if there's something in your gut, just just do it. Just go and do it. Don't let anything stop you. Just go and do it, even if it sounds crazy. Speak it into existence. If it's a bigger thing, just keep talking about it, and it'll manifest over time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, look, it, it's I feel like I've manifested a lot of the things that I've had that I've that have happened to me in my career and my life and, and all of that stuff so i will continue to do that um but everyone should manifest as much as possible it is a very strong and powerful tool that i think a lot of us have and we don't realize how powerful we are mm -hmm. um the second thing i would say uh i know i was only supposed to say one uh <laughs> but the second thing that i would say it, it this has been my mantra for for a, a while now um and i think ron you've heard me say this multiple times as well and i kind of wake up and I do things, whether it's career, pro professional, giving advice, whatever, it's be comfortable being uncomfortable. Get comfortable mm -hmm. being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in situations where you know you're not going to succeed. Do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way that you're going to learn. And the only way that you're going to learn is if you try. And if you don't try, then you ain't going to... You're stuck. You're stuck. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So you have to put yourself in situations to that are going to better yourself. If you don't understand something, Go watch a video and then attempt it. Mm. I feel like Ron is a perfect example. Hell yeah. Oh Literally God. every, yes. every yes. single thing that you guys have built here. And I do want to say thank you so much. Number one, Ron, thank you so much for having me and for asking me to be on the show. I did for many weeks now say to myself, why the hell does Ron want me on this show? <laughs> yeah, a great like, story. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, an amazing story. Yo. But, but I, I do want to say thank you. What you guys have created, Dre, Lady H, what you guys have created here is really, really awesome. Um, you make people feel very comfortable to have these conversations. And Appreciate you're, it. You're, yeah. you're taking those nuggets out through the conversation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel forced. Um, so you're providing an amazing resource out there. So thank you so much for having me, man. Appreciate for real, for real. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for coming. Um, I knew, yo, the minute that I, it, it was so funny, Ron, when I, when I met you, 
Um, I probably met you again because I feel like we probably <laughs> we, met we definitely at crossed paths at, at another point of our lives. But when I met you again at Viernes uh, Social at the Chop House, it was there is an energy and there is an energy that people have, and I feel like even as men, going back to that whole like masculinity shit or whatever. You can have energy with other people. It doesn't have to be with a female. It could be with a man, and it could be wh wh whoever. And just their energy. If you vibe off of that, yo, keep building yeah. and keep mm -hmm. going. You know, because there's a reason that that's there. You know, so like explore it and see what happens, and be okay with failing fast. Because again, the same thing. You got to get uncomfortable with certain situations. You don't know, and if you fail, that's fine because you're gonna learn from that failure. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, like. Don't take any conversation or any relationship for granted. These are important. We had one conversation, and from that conversation that we had at the chop house, I then hit you up and was like, yo, I I, I think we can work together and do something together. I don't know how it's going to work out, but like, <laughs> like I think we, we should do happen. something. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah, let's, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's very rare when you find other people mm -hmm. that have that same, like, Fuck it, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Super don't rare. overthink it. Let's just do it. You know, yeah. and, and, and I think you also just need people like that in your life to help you get over certain humps. You know, absolutely. So, so I do want to say thank you, thank you for being you, thank you for for challenging people to be the better version of themselves because I've seen you do it. Um, and yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. get comfortable being uncomfortable, people. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, no. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, the wonderful, lovely, honorable lady H. <laughs> You you do want to see people be their best selves, Ron. You do, and that's something I love about you. And that's you like fight for that, or fight isn't the right word, but you strive for that so much. You you see everyone in the best potential light of themselves, and I think that's a really wonderful quality that you have. Uh, <laughs> thank you for sharing the, your blueprint. That was really <laughs> great. Thank you, and I I want to like I want to stay for the next part of <laughs> but, but that may be at another point and what I took away from this conversation and what I want to share and that where others listening to take away from it was the point of view that that and to to remember your point of view and to remove yourself which is tied to letting go of your fear of failure one's fear of failure of letting go of what other people think of us and what mm -hmm. other people's expectations are of us. Cause at the end of the day, we have to sit with ourselves and be happy with ourselves and mm -hmm. the choices that we made. So as individuals, so I, I, I want to just point that out and remember it and carry it with me in our, in my work and in our work. Yes. These takeaways are deep. Man. Yo, like, deep. What the fuck deep. am I going to say? <laughs> yeah, how are you going to top that? <laughs> oh, shit. I, no pressure. Should have thought about it half an hour ago. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, when, when I took on this challenge of, of going down this podcasting route, it was to have genuine conversations with people that I, I think are just dope, are phenomenal people. And, you know, listening to everyone's blueprint always gives me an insight into that there is no one size fits all for any of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, there is always the, the, the trend that I've noticed is there is always this one constant of being consistent and wanting to pursue whatever it is that you wish to do. At least if, whether it's creativity, whether it's self-growth, whether it's, uh, you know, activism, anything. It's just consistency. And, the and it, do it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be fucking right. Just going after it. Uh, just that, that, that action. And whether the reaction is a negative one, that's fine. And continue growing. Because... The one thing that I'm hoping to be true, which I don't know yet, but what I've seen in, in many other realms and many other people's realities is that there will always be a lot more no's than yeses. And all we need is one yes to change our whole motherfucking entire life. Mm -hmm. Hearing, you know, the, the backstories and learning the backstories of that one defining moment of, or, or, in, in people's lives is always, you know, so, so exciting 
because hearing your your story regarding yo going from <laughs> fuck the million views, you know, waking up one day and seeing twenty thousand views, and you're like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> but but then even before that, just the actual, just the action, the simple action of hitting yo, we just uploaded a video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That 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 in itself is at its core. The exciting part. That's like oh, that's, the part, yeah. <laughs> that's the part. That's the part. That part. Because that what we can now now once you've seen the accolades and you've done the the red carpet walks and you've met the billboard people and you've done all that. Had you not started with that one motherfucking action, none of the other stuff mm -hmm. would have happened. And and and, and it, it all just kind of ties in with me re reminding yourself yes you know i do encourage people to be their best them and and because i'm like yo so what if you fucking don't reach for the stars let's at least go for the fucking let's hit the moon let's get out of this fucking world period and let's be ourselves because what the one thing I do know is if we don't fucking try, nothing will mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. That's right up. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Literally nothing. Facts. And 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 what's the worst that can happen? Yo, you get teased. Your aunt will say, Yo, tu no hecho nada con tu vida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yo, that you know, these are realities too, but you know, all that shit is just fucking your ego. Yeah. That's and, all it is. And that you know what though, another thing too, and I know we're we're, we're supposed to be wrapping up now, but um, <laughs> Yo, support your friends, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, support your people. And, and I think that, and it happens a lot, right? Where we get caught up in like, yo, but how is this going to make money? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How are we, we going to make money? Up. Yeah. I, I, like, how, I, how am I going get to this, get this piece of change out of whatever it is, this time I'm investing over here? And a lot of things is that it's not. Some things are not going to make money. And and you need to be okay with, with that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I hit a million views. Where's my paycheck? Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to be completely okay with that. And there are going to be, and you have to also understand that there are going to be people that are wholeheartedly, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. That's not a good mentality to have. Because you end up sidelining so many different opportunities mm -hmm. that like, could have led to something bigger mm. and better. Yep. You know, like you can be working for free pro bono for about a year. But like Ron said, all it takes is that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that one to get in front of somebody's eyes that will be like, I need this. Yeah. I need yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yo, like and, and I and I'm so sorry and I'm gonna just say it anyway because like um Yo, like, and as we were talking, I'm like, yo, I left out another fucking big chunk right here. Even before the film festival, and I remember I was like, yo, I've been in front of the camera. The biggest thing that I did right after college was I ended up doing a music video for an artist by the name of Aloe Black. Oh, Aloe oh, Black. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. So at the time, there was a, a big show on HBO uh, that was called How to Make It in America. Yeah. Mm. I loved and that the, show. And the I Need a Dollar track was the theme song. Was the theme song. Mm. Mm. And I watched that show religiously because it was about two dudes here in New York trying to make it, starting a clothing brand, and they're regular dudes, whatever, Spanish dude and a white dude. And it was about that, like, Soho kind of downtown kind yep. of culture. Mm -hmm. And I loved everything about it, you know? Uh, Louis Guzman was in it, Rasta Monster. Um, anyway, it was yeah, just I a remember. really dope, it was just a really well put together I, I, really I like show. the insurance part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember this show, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, as you were saying, uh, Aloe Black had a song called I Need a Dollar that was the theme song of the show. Now, my mentor, he, his cousin went to college with the writer, they shared the same room and all of the show. Mm. And so, he had that connection to the show and on top of that he had a connection to his best friend who had started a production company brand new hadn't shot anything the first thing he shot was the music video for i need a dollar for Aloe black no way so my mentor calls me he's like yo can you and eric eric is my best friend he's like yo can you guys come we're gonna shoot this video like can you come Eric is gonna be the main guy. And he's like, yo, just just come and like support him or whatever. And Eric was like, yo, come. And I was like, all right, fuck it, let's go. Mm -hmm. like, what else am I what else am I gonna do? I get to see my boy do this video yeah, for this yeah, yeah. song in the show. Like, that's huge. I'm over here thinking it's gonna be big fucking set and all that. <laughs> 
<laughs> we shot it in Harlem. We go to Harlem. We go to a brownstone in Harlem. It was this, the director. His name was Khalil. It was his dad's brownstone. And there's no big crews. Two cameras. <laughs> a bunch of niggas. <laughs> Aloe black <laughs> and like and like I'm like all right whatever I'm here for it and so my boy Eric he's a little bit bigger than me he's I don't know why I did this but <laughs> he, he, he's a he's a little bit bigger than me a little broader a little taller and so when he when he, we did the fitting when we got there it was like seven o'clock in the morning we did the fitting in, in, in the the brownstone and he comes out of the bathroom they're like oh, they start muttering you know when they do that I don't know if you ever seen this don't but whisper. like whisper yo when they when they're on set they they cover their mouths and they're just, yeah. <laughs> and then one it's one of the producers he comes over he's like yo you're a little too big you're too big for the character that we want you to play and they look at me and they're like yo you mind standing up the one time it's cool for me to be short you know I'm, <laughs> I'm a short guy I'm 5'9 5'8 five, 5'9 five, 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 whatever Who, who's counting <laughs> centimeters and shit oh, shit so, so I'm like alright fine whatever I and they were like you're the perfect height so then they asked Eric, like, yo, do you mind if we switch and we make him the main character? And so he was like, nah, I'm good with it. Fuck it. And so we ended up shooting this music video for Aloe Black for I Need a Dollar. The no very way, you're first in that video. I'm, that? I'm the main I'm guy. I'm going to fucking play that shit right, yeah. right, right yeah. up. That was wild. So that was, a, that was a really, really dope moment. So now going back, because every the entire time that I've talk, told you guys about all of the dope shit that I've done, not once have I mentioned money. That's right. true, yeah, though. That's true. Not once that I'm not a deal, yeah, yeah. not nothing. You're right. Yeah. And the one time you did want money, you jumped in the pool. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. From that, from that music video, that Aloe Black music video with Stone's Throw, um, I got paid a bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few days later, they call me and they're like, yo, after the first shoot, that shoot day, they're like, hey, we got to keep shooting, but we got to shoot the other part in L.A. Mm. I've never been to LA before, I, I ever, you know. And I was like, "All right, like I don't." And I'm freaking out because I'm like, "I don't got no don't money." To like, like LA. how am I gonna get to LA? And they were like, "No, no, no. We, we'll we take care you. of it. We'll fly oh, you out. Okay. You're gonna stay with the director." Blah blah. Oh, blah wow. this and that. So I went out to LA for three, four days. First time out there, that shit was wild. Just to finish the second half of this music video, wow. and that within itself, like those were core memory moments, right? Mm -hmm. Like so. That first night in LA, I'm I'm sli I'm sleeping on the couch in this director's crib in a real like LA like house like you know y'all watch Snowfall you know how like yeah, all the houses yeah, the yeah, walls yeah, 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 yeah. and all that shit yeah, it's one of those years. cribs you know yeah. like and so I'm like all right whatever and he's taking me throughout all of LA I went to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles had, <laughs> had, I put hot sauce on my chicken for the first time yeah. oh, chicken and waffles waffle for the first time yeah. I never okay. thought that hot sauce and maple syrup was it's like so a good. thing it's, it's the so, best good. Combination. so good so yeah. good and that night I ended up going to the Viper Room now the Viper Room is an iconic iconic venue in LA that's been there since the early 90s and it's owned by Johnny Depp Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, since yeah. closed down just recently, about a year oh. or two ago. Uh, from the trial, all the artists used to go and shoot oh. up heroin in there. Oh, yeah. got it. <laughs> but a lot of up and coming floor. artists used to yeah. go and perform for the first time there. Mm -hmm. So I go to the Viper Room that night to go see this artist, and I was like, I never heard of her before. And she, in my, the director's name was Khalil. He's like, Yo, she's super dope, man. She's super dope. Her name is um, Janelle Monae. Oh, oh shit! Oh, wow. and, and I was like, "All right, whatever." Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's so cool. Yo, and I saw that was the first time I ever heard of Janelle Monae. First time I saw Janelle Monae. Yo, she came, and the Viper Room was a small spot. It yeah. has a stage. Yeah. It has a little bit of a you know little dancing area, whatever. Yo, she came out through the like side door, carried in by like six niggas. She was wearing all black. Everybody was wearing like these black cloaks. I love and that. And it was, I love her yo, it was an experience. Yo, seeing, I was right there. I was right yeah, in front yeah, of her. Yeah, yeah. And then all, all, all that, I'm giving you the story. All that to say is that never say no to any opportunity, man. Like every opportunity is important. Every conversation has value. And you never know where it's going to take you because again because of all of these this series of events that took place personally none of these things were professional these were all things that i was doing because i love being in front of the camera mm -hmm. and i love creating all of that ended up becoming experiences that that helped me professionally yeah you know within my career so ja in the beginning when i said yo when i got out of college all i knew was like i just want to be in entertainment you start that point on that pencil starts to refine over time because of those experiences yeah mm -hmm. and so i'm like yo i've been on so many 
productions and so many sets and I've worked with so many different people I understand the hierarchy of what it is to be on an actual mm -hmm. set for a commercial for a music video for whatever you start taking all of these things and you amass all that experience and like this becomes what you want to do and so that like fast forward into where I am now is like holy shit I've taken <laughs> all of the shit that I love and this is what I'm doing now I'm making content yeah I'm making content yeah. I'm storytelling and I'm behind the camera, but the opportunities that I do have to be in front of the camera, I wow the fuck out of people. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Put me in, coach. I'm ready at any yeah, point, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and when I get those opportunities and, and people see me in those situations, that's when it's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, why are you working at a corporate office when you should be here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Doing I, this. In front I will of the camera. share this, and uh, and not to cut you off. No, but but I will share this because one, we're we're short on time, but two, uh, you said something the other day during one of our one of our meetings, and um, because you and and Jeff had recently been. Uh, say 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 how it is. Say how it is. We, we, Jeff and I both got we both got laid off. Oh fuck. So so we've been the first first of all. I think if you guys watch the news, you know every single company has right. been doing massive layoffs for the yeah, past yeah. six seven months now, right? right? So unfortunately, we were we we got hit with it. Both of our companies like laid us off, and so now we're like. We we, we're not doing anything and i'm spending most of my day like on linkedin applying for jobs but then it's like i come into situations with ron you know and i'm sitting <laughs> down we having a meeting and it is the most productive meeting that i've had <laughs> because you know what i'm saying like because i'm doing something that i'm passionate about and i care about and i'm i'm putting pen to paper and even it's just as simple as like just breaking down a timeline a work back schedule and you're just like Nah, this is what I should be doing. And why am I doing this for somebody else Gross, when I could yeah. be doing this for myself? Yeah. Yeah. You know? So but in in the meeting in he goes because they they now like it's confirmed they're both, you know, the casualties of the economic system and, <laughs> and, 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 and casualties. <laughs> and and he goes, Jeff, remember when we told ourselves let's stop doing a podcast for these jobs we got <laughs> <laughs> yeah i could start Wait, doing it again what, what a it. fucking Quote stupid it. idea that was <laughs> and that was yeah. the, that was the thing yo it was it's so strange <laughs> and it's very serendipitous because so with our podcast you know shout out to the smartest guys in the room we when we stopped we took a year we've taken a year long hiatus Damn. wow and it was only because jeff and i started these brand new jobs mm. fuck and so <laughs> i was like all right there. i need a little bit of we both needed some time to get acclimated and start like being able to become assets within where we were and then i travel a lot for work and shit like that so it was like damn we don't really have time to do the podcast thing it's all right fine we'll focus on on this stupidest thing we ever did <laughs> the dumbest thing we ever did that would jump back on the podcast it, 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 and now we're bringing it back but it just goes to show you that like do not limit yourself to just trying to be put all your eggs in this mm -hmm. one basket like if you have any inkling of being creative whatsoever answer that call yo answer that call and be consistent and keep going with it because if you're passionate about this more than you are about your nine to five yeah yo invest your time here you're right but you could do both yep. going back to what i was saying i love the duality of mm. superman because he can do both you can do both we can all do, do both, both. yeah you right. know so that to me is so so important and i think we forget we get tripped up and we get overwhelmed and it's like Yo, take it easy. Yeah. Regulate your thoughts, you know, like <laughs> Usa a You know, Usa and, and, but, Usa but you can manage to do so much more than what you you're not to you're not your job. You you're know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like you're so much more than that. You're right. Um so yeah, now here we are. We bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna bring it back. <laughs> We're bringing it back. <laughs> bring it back. I'm producing this shit, so it's gonna pop off. I ain't gonna yeah. let it yeah. fucking yeah. not yeah. fuck not, that. Not be consistent. We, and you're gonna refuse. benefit <laughs> off of the year and a half of it's everything that he's learned. It's, yeah. it's, it's true. I'm like, yo, yeah. I'm gonna take that shit. It's true. We're gonna yeah. fucking no, no. make it happen yeah. 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 in one month. You're yeah. in good hands. You're in good hands. <laughs> Experiences sometimes way more than cash. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah so at some point they turn into cash. No, it will, it will turn into cash. Trick right there. Th this yeah. will definitely be a two-parter episode. <laughs> so, so with that said, 
We're going to wrap it up. Uh, Dre Drizzle. Yes, yes. My brother, Just O. Thank you very much for coming through, man. I appreciate Absolutely, you so much. For, for a man that had nothing to say, you, you had <laughs> a, a lot whole say. world of knowledge and experience to share. So I appreciate you, baby. Uh, yeah. uh, the always lovely, honorable Lady H. You know I love you. Thank you very much for your love patience. You <laughs> and this is Ron Kane. This is Just Words. Nobody Care. We love you. Thank you for taking the time and listening. Have a wonderful day. Let's go.